How have you enjoyed it so far? So this section, inshallah, we were cooling it so far, chat. Then Brother Adnan realized that the water canister was there, but there was nothing in it. So we were going to call it fat-free water chat. But then, alhamdulillah, we changed it to chai chat, inshallah. So this section, inshallah, uh, we have an opportunity to ask some of the sheikhs in a way that we can try to understand how to face reality in a much more comfortable way. So, Sheikh Wahaj, I just want to start with you, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for coming, Sheikh. Um, one of the biggest uh, events has just come to an end, right? The Qatar World Cup 2022. I just want to ask you, what did you think about the 2022 World Cup in Qatar? Bismillah wa salatu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. In one word, revealing. Um, I think it revealed the goodness of some hearts and it revealed the ugliness of other hearts. And I think um, it showed the hospitality or ability to be hospitable of some people and the lack of ability to appreciate hospitality of some people. Um, and I think it was very revealing to myself. Um, as with regards to um, the event itself as a sporting uh, event, phenomenal, I think it was very well organized. And uh, the outcome was pleasant as well. So. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, you know, you said something interesting, and on that point, I just want to ask Mufti make something, right? Mufti, you posted something with some tea, you know, yani when uh, one of the teams won, and the other teams were, I'm not going to mention the name, I'll let you try to, you know. I can say the names. It's okay. Allahu Akbar. No big deal. Morocco beat Portugal. I don't really follow football that much, but we know the scores and, you know, we're up to date with what happens and so on. So uh, there is a specific way of pouring Moroccan tea. Those who know, know. The green Where, tea, yeah? Yeah, the, 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 the Moroccan tea. tea. Yeah. It's not green mint tea, it's Moroccan tea. Don't get Allah it wrong. Allah Allah. Yeah. <laughs> specific, so, specific, yes. You've you got to go there to appreciate it. Allah Allah. And so you pour it in a way that you actually lift the, the kettle right up and you let it, you know, make that sound and bubble up and so on. It's the height of hospitality among the Moroccans. So people thought I was cussing the Portuguese. I didn't. I was just giving them tea to calm down because they, they, they didn't believe what happened. That's all. I promise you. And, and why did Morocco deserve credit? Because they walloped them. What else? I mean, it was history made. Morocco's the only African team that ever went to where it got to. The only one. And even from the Arab world, it's the only one. So African and Arab. Moroccan is not just one of the two. They, are, uh, they belong to different identities. And mashallah, that's, that's where Allah has placed them. So why not? That's why I did that with the tea. Not because I was cussing someone or I wanted to you know, hurt their feelings. They say, what are you doing? I did, I did another one as well. I, when, when, when Saudi Arabia knocked out, uh, well, not knocked out, but when they beat uh, Argentina, it was history, man. It was the first team after, it was the first loss after 36 wins. Come on. The first ever Asian team in history to knock out or to beat, should I say, uh, Argentina. I just wanted to say well done to them. I don't think I committed something haram, haram, haram. And I just said, I, I tried to crack a bit of a witty joke to say things got a little bit messy. Not because I don't like the guy. <laughs> Not because I don't like the guy or I like the guy. It's had nothing to do with it. It's just the word. It happened to be a guy's name on that, in that team. is messy. I didn't choose his name. So things got a bit messy. And later on, I congratulated them. Or I, didn't, I just said, well done to them because they took the World Cup. It doesn't mean I swapped teams, I was a hypocrite, I, sw I, didn't, I didn't say I belong to any team at all. I still follow the Moroccan team. Subhanallah, I think there's a lot of positive that came out uh, from the World Cup. But moving on, I just want to uh, touch on something because we are talking about facing reality. And one of the questions I'm just going to ask Sheikh Wahaj again. Um, in your talk, you talked about depression, anxiety um, in your lecture. Do you see social media having such an effect on the mental health of people? Um, I think all the research out currently 
um, links social media directly to depression and anxiety, especially amidst the young. Um, the reason for that is quite simple. Um, so for hours on end, they are there be glued to watching the best possible uh, snippets of someone else's fake life. So, and then they look at themselves and they don't have that. So they don't have the filtered faces, they don't have um, the coffee cups with the heart inside it, they don't have, um, you know, that unique destination which is really crowded in reality but somehow vacant for the social media pic. Um, so that constant regular comparison uh, makes you unwell. There's a few things with that, like they know that it causes that, like, the, like there's adequate research, they know it causes that, and yet greed seems to overpower their desire to give welfare to young people. Um, so can you imagine, um, I, as I say, I, I'm, I'm in education. I have students, uh, boys and more so girls, who have to compare their real life body images to the filtered images of someone else. And although they know that that is fake, but the head will still uh, create that little bit of um, ang you know, the, uh, sadness in comparison there. Um, just if I can, one more minute. Mufti, would you like tea? You're offering. Uh -huh. You know, I was about to grab one, then I realized, you know what, because I've never even offered the tea to the sheikhs. So I'll put it straight away down for, you know what, let me just relax a little bit. No, no, because they, they, they call the event chai and there's no chai, so what's the... <laughs> it's not Moroccan, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, to just touch hold, on hold that on, point, Habibi, I'm not finished. Okay, sorry. Uh, so Allah bless you Allah, Allah. Allah. Um, and now you made me forget my point <laughs> we're talking about filters we're talking about uh, yeah so uh, one of the one of the advice I wish to give um, to everyone here um, two things number one um, the Quran says وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضِ عَلَى بَعْضِ don't long um, for what Allah has blessed some with over others. Um, that longing starts from looking. So when you start looking at something and you invest enough eye contact onto it, um, uh, some kind of feeling will grow into that, whether that's you know a car or a person or this or that. Uh, and then when you face away from the social media and you don't have that, that does create a little void there. So um, avoid it where possible. Secondly, stop sharing personal moments of your life or uh, fake moments of your life with others because that distresses other people. Um, you know, um, Allah bless you all, Ya Rab. No, it's true. The first time I came across filters was when my daughter was showing me and all of a sudden my eyes were, I know it's this small, but on the filter we came that small. But you know what, we realized. I just want to compliment your eyes. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I walked into that one. I walked into that one. Subhanallah. Mashallah. No, but I just want to. I just want to touch on that point as well because a lot of these people that do put their filters and life on Instagram, a lot of them or wherever they, whatever social media platform they do it on, we then realize that a lot of the stuff that they're portraying, the watches, the clothes, the money, all turns out to be fake as well. So, I just. Sorry, man. I think I've posted a bit of my life online, man. Uh, some of the stuff. And I, maybe I, I, I feel the need to explain myself, you know. So basically... <laughs> now I'm sitting here and I'm just getting hammered. I said, yeah, better say something. You know? <laughs> now, in reality, you know, a lot of people look at scholars and think that, you know, you've got to be dry to be religious in order to be a person who prays five times a day a person who's trying uh, to get close to Allah, you know, you've got to divorce yourself totally from this world, which is wrong. So, 
in order to clarify that look there is halal fun our children need an alternative i mean the haram is so much i mean i'd rather jump off a plane any day any day than to enter a pub and 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 have a taste of something that would displease allah uh, the same applies if I, I was on a jetpack recently in the in the UAE and people were getting excited and the reality is I still have a video of that that I haven't released so hang on guys it's coming uh, hashtag it, jetpack video huh uh, yeah but it's it was so it was so beautiful and I noticed the interactions of the people who want who understand you a little bit more or feel that you understand them a little bit more, begin to listen to other things that you've said in your life. So that's more of a da'wah rather than anything else. If I posted the little, the beautiful Bengal cat the other day, some of you might have seen it. I mean, it looks like a little baby leopard or a, or a cheetah or something. But uh, the idea is there are a lot of uh, pet lovers, a lot on earth. And they begin to relate to you and you relate to them. And when that happens, they begin to take other things from you too, not just that. So it's more, of, uh, it's more to do with the algorithms, it's more to do with trying to get you to, to, trying to get the social media platform to keep suggesting to you so much of the other content that has nothing to do with jumping off a plane, but rather if you click on any one of those clips once, the next 30 days you're going to get free advertising from me there. So, it's actually uh, a means of da'wah, if you look at it. And that's why I sometimes do this. I, I, I'll, I'll never forget when I was sitting with my girls, uh, teaching them how to knit, and I got bombarded for it. Uh, I, don't, I would do it a million times again. I, I really don't care what people think about it, because I know what I did was right. It, there's nothing to say you're not masculine enough. My man, if masculinity had to be gauged by a machine, I promise you we'd knock 10 out of 10. Mm. Allah bless you. And by the way, I've got 10 kids, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you um, and your family. I, I just yes. want to touch on that, please. Um, so, um, I want to make a distinction uh, between social media where it is for a purpose as it is done by the du'at. And Mufti Mink, mashallah, Allah bless him, Ya Rab, um, you will not go to a corner of the earth where his khair hasn't touched it. Trust me on that. Amen. Um, so, Allah bless him. So, um, our purpose isn't... Uh, that, that sphere more so. Um, the question is, that does it cause anxiety and depression amidst the young and so far as comparisons and body images and that and stuff like that it is. As with regards to using it for a purpose, I myself use it, Mufti uses it, everyone else uses it and the purpose is, um, like the actual benefits are huge with regards to the da'wah. Um, you know, humanizing um, the face of Islam that they have tried to dehumanize very intently. Um, and um, Allah Rabbul Aziz accept inshallah ta'ala from one another. Uh, Mufti, Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Wahid. Um, Mufti, just wanted to touch on another point. You mentioned that you're a father of ten, alhamdulillah. Right? But me being a father of three, and this light upon light, having the title facing reality, we all know what day it is today, and uh, a lot of celebration that other people are doing around the world. But a lot of us, maybe in this audience, can find it sometimes difficult to draw a parallel of how to try and engage in certain ways when we come to this. That's why we put this kind of event together, uh, get young people in there. But as a father of 10 and Sheikh as well, how, how do you manage this? It's a beautiful holiday. Almost the whole world is on holiday towards the end of the year. We occupy ourselves with that which is beautiful, with that which is meaningful, with that which has... There's no harm in getting together as a family and having uh, a meal together because it's a holiday. Because... Those who work won't get an opportunity during other times. I know someone told me, well, it's Christmas Day, it's haram to get together. I'm, it depends what you're getting together for. I'm getting together because everyone's uh, available on this day. And innam al-a'malu bin niyat. You know, all your actions are judged by their intention. So, so what if it's Christmas or not Christmas? Whether, no matter what it is. The fact that it's a holiday is a holiday. So we, we need to make sure that we educate ourselves, we, we respect everyone else and we know a little bit of the history of what's happening and so on. I was very interested to learn about Christmas and the fact that even the Christians don't really believe in Christmas, all of them. Uh, a lot of them argue and debate amongst each other as to what exactly it is, whether it's just a big huge commercial stunt or not, whether it actually has significance and it's okay. I, I'm not in that debate because all I need to do is to ensure that, look, we respect those who differ and we have the right to differ. 
And that doesn't mean that we're spreading any hate or disrespect. And at the same time, we will occupy ourselves with that which is constructive and good, even if it means just enjoying a holiday. I'm just having a break. You know, speaking about social media, even if you have a business, not necessarily the da'wah per se, even if you have a business and you want to promote your products, there's no harm in using uh, social media for as long as you're not lying about them products. Because I have purchased a few dodgy things from TikTok. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> They, they, they get us to click saying that the brightest light on earth, I purchased two of them, they delivered them, mashallah, I paid for them uh, an arm and a leg, and when they came, I turned the thing on and it barely shines down my corridor. <laughs> and then what do you do? You say, well, you just got to say tick and talk, it works twice, that's it. So we got to be careful. When, you, when you're promoting your product, just be truthful about it and Allah will give you barakah, inshallah. Zakallah khair, Sheikh. Sheikh Wahaj, one question I just wanted to ask is, you, from your talk, uh, Iman was a major theme that you spoke about. Uh, can we increase our Iman? And if so, how can we increase our Iman? Um, so, Iman increases, Iman reduces, Iman grows old, Iman gets uh, rejuvenated, Iman has taste, uh, and Iman has light. Um, so, the first thing as with regards to how to uh, increase your Iman. Uh, dear ones, I can't emphasize this enough. Um, learn what Iman is and learn what our beliefs are. Like if you have to spend a week just nutting that out, uh, please spend the week because there's nothing more important than that. Um, and once you figure that out, and, and the, the, the verse, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ إِلَّهُ And know as in learn Tawheed before action. So learn first. That's the first one. Secondly, uh, Iman increases with ta'a, with obedience uh, of Allah Rabbul Izzah. So anytime you walk to the masjid, trust me, every step, uh, and you feel this the greatest when you're in, in Umrah or in like every step you take, you feel uh, Iman increasing. So walking to the masjid, praying, doing any type of khair increases your iman. Uh, iman, um, the Prophet wasallam said with regards to it is that um, it ages or it weighs on you like clothing weighs. So he says, Jadidu imanakum, renew, revive, resuscitate your iman. Um, so they said, Wa kayfa nujadidu imanana qala akthiru in qawli la ilaha illallah. Increase the saying of la ilaha illallah. Uh, and as with regards to the taste, uh, if you want to experience sweetness of faith, uh, give sadaqah from what you love. Like something that's very dear to you, give away parts of that as sadaqah, you will feel sweetness of faith. And as with regards to the light of iman, um, the hadith says, um, is fear the sight of the believer because he sees with the sight of, um, of iman. Or with the, so therefore, um, as in light given by Allah Rabbul Azzah. And this in references to the light of Iman. So um, its benefits are endless, but that's inshallah the, the path for it inshallah. Shukran. Uh, Mufti, is there anything you want to add on that? Because I do have a question, but I feel like maybe... The tea is over. I, I drank the cup. Does it depict the end of our You know meeting? what? It's a very follow, good follow-up question because I was going to ask you this because you've been around the world like yeah. many places, right? Where is the best food? Pakistan. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. I just visited recently and I changed my whole mind about so Pakistan. So what was it before then? It didn't exist. And, that, and Pakistan is now firm, yeah? Well, I tell you, go there. You know, I, I have a problem when I visit the UK. Every time I visit the UK, I used to gain a kilo, half a kilo. I visited Pakistan. They thought I was joinal. Who is this brother, Joinal? Oh, that's, okay, you guys don't know who Joinal is, do you? <laughs> He's a brother sitting right here. That's his name. MashaAllah. <laughs> MashaAllah. Barakallah. No, what I mean is, uh, it's, it's really, I, I try, I, I usually eat once a day, towards the late afternoon. I have tea in the morning, have a bit of a snack, maybe, maybe, if I'm hungry, right at the end of the day, but the main one meal. When I visited Pakistan, everyone is ready to feed you, number one. Number two is not just any food, they're going to make it there in front of you and they give you these 
you know, hot, hot food, beautiful, mashallah, well cooked and that's it, mashallah. You just end up eating before you know it. You just feel like ah, so lazy to do the next thing. Mashallah. May Allah bless uh, everyone. Look, every place has its speciality. It's difficult to say this is better than the other. But I think it's because it's very recent I was there. So the taste lingers and it's still in my, on my tongue. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh Wahaj, I'm going to ask you a direct question. Forget other countries. How do you find the UK? Cold. Uh, but cozy. I got a big smile on me. I'm hoping you like say good things about me. Um, alhamdulillah. So far as uh, so, I come from Australia. Um, very big land, very small population, and um, diversity is not as much as this. Um, I came to the airport. Uh, security guards were comfortably speaking Urdu or Hindi to one another, and I was like, I see. This seems normal to them, Mufti. Like. Like this is no anyway. English is the normal so language. Uh, where nah. are you from? They don't only speak English. Uh, no, I'm, I don't think there's enough of any other language for people to speak it. Like as in uh, the minorities are very small here. Diversity is phenomenal. Uh, like I don't think anyone feels not at home here, uh, which is which is a great achievement. Yeah. And my tea's finished as well. Just so that. Allah <laughs> Akbar. Allah Akbar. Now. Uh, Sorry, there's something up. Now, you know, um, diversity is a very good point that we've picked on. Um, and Sheikh, you spoke about, you know, uh, Mufti, you spoke about that Bengal tiger that you have. You're from Zimbabwe, right? Now, one of the greatest things, I think you have the biggest count of elephants in that country, right? But being from that country, what is one of those unique animals you've seen, the creation of Allah? And how does it remind you of, you know, this is what Allah creates, this is what Allah can do, and nothing can do the same? Do you know, there are so many animals. Yesterday in my talk, I said that the, we have the largest population of elephants in the world, I think it was. I'm quite sure we see so many elephants, especially in a certain part of the country. We also have lions and, and so many others. And if you take a look at a lot of the, these animals, they have a very, very beautiful side to them. You know, lions are wild and obviously the king of the jungle. But at the same time, when you watch them with their cubs and their families, the way they are is a lesson for mankind, wallahi. They are so possessive, they are so connecting. They will not allow anyone to come close to the cubs. You, you try it and I tell myself, if only humankind could learn to take care of their little cubs in this way, I think we'd solve a lot of the social problems on the globe. The same applies to the elephants. The elephants, you try and mess with, uh, you know, a herd of elephants that has with it one of those little ones, you're dead, I, I promise you. They, they will come to the motor vehicle and turn it upside down. It has happened. So, yeah, a lot of animals, I think, uh, but I just drew a lesson from something that I found very interesting about these animals. And I'm sure it's a lot of other animals you may have seen, yeah? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I know, because you guys have the, one of the beautiful migration period where all the... Animals migrate. Anyway, we're going into that, animal channels. That's <laughs> slightly, slightly north in a country called Kenya. Uh, they have a, the, the wildebeest migration, which is amazing. It's people fly from all over the world to, to Kenya in order to, to, to witness that. Mashallah. Literally hundreds of thousands of animals just migrating all together, moving from one place to another. So subhanAllah, Allah is providing for everything. Huh? In this way, all animals, all humans being... But Sheikh Wahaj, I just want to ask you a question. Right? Um, Sin is everywhere these days, right? We are, uh, wherever you go, there's, there's always something that can be happening, which is sinful. What's the best advice you can give to those who fall into sin? So, I think what you've alluded to, um, stated in a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is, كل بني آدم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون. All, of son, all the sons of men are sinners, as in all of us. Like another name for me and you are sinners. Like no one's an exception. We will all err. And the best of those who err are those who repent and atone and turn back to, to Allah Rabbul Aziz. So I think um, that uh, in itself is the solution. First and foremost, know that you will sin, but be uh, regular on your repentance. Um, like repent a lot. Um, 
As with regards to uh, repentance, there's just one little delicate point that I wish to, to bring your attention towards. Um, when you are repenting, make sure your heart is not planning that sin again or a sin again. Um, because istighfar gets accepted or forgiveness happens when even if it's momentarily, even if it's for that moment that you are not planning um, that sin again or a sin again. If Allah knows goodness in your heart, meaning not an intent or a little deceptive plan to do that again, Allah Rabbul Izza will replace it with something better and forgive you. So as a requirement of forgiveness is that. Um, second, after that, increase the saying of istighfar. Ali radiallahu anhu says, that Allah Rabbul Izza gave us uh, two salvations, two protections from the punishment of Allah Rabbul Izza. The first one was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Prophet passed away. And then the second one is, I will not punish them so long as they are seeking istighfar. So sometimes you, you have sinned and you worry about its consequences coming to bite you. So increase the saying of istighfar and Allah Rabbul Izza um, will keep that uh, at bay. Allah forgive me in you, Ya Rab. And Habibi, again, my tea is finished. I have one more here for you, Sheikh. No, that's fine, inshallah. But. Sure. Uh, Mufti, yeah, we've only got a couple of minutes left. I just wanted to ask you, what's the one thing, as all of us are here, what's the one thing that we can positively take away from today's event to make a change in our life? I think every one of us needs to use our mobile phones responsibly because the mobile phone has become an extension of a person. Every one of us here, uh, the bulk of us would have a mobile phone. We keep it with us. We have a special number, if dialed, will get to us. And we pick it up, we use it, we see it, we communicate with it, we interact with the world with it. It's by far one of the most, uh, you know, well-kept gadgets close to us, if not in our pockets. It's called a cellular phone. You keep it on yourself. If we can use it responsibly, I think we've taken the best message from this evening uh, regarding the topic that we're speaking about, facing reality, because one of the biggest realities is life has changed completely. And this mobile phones, every day things are changing. You know, earlier when I said in my talk that you can, there is actually an application, you can say what you want it to help you with, and it actually gives you a whole lecture on that or a whole write-up on it. You know, you can, you can tell them to give you a lecture of mine on a certain topic, and it will just type out that whole thing, and that's it. I mean, technology has advanced leaps and bounds. Some of us don't even know what is in the market. So, inshallah, if we can use this in a way that's beneficial, in a way that will uh, improve our lives, be it your, your, you know, your deen or your dunya. It's okay. And inshallah, in that way, we would be able to, uh, inshallah, bi'ibnillah, lead a more meaningful life, a life with less regret. Because many of us have access to so much we don't use. May Allah forgive us. Barakallah. I mean, Sheikh Wahaj, just uh, on a, to draw a parallel on that last question. What's the one thing we should continuously be doing after today's event? Um, two things. One, increase your knowledge, um, because that's where the Iman Academy comes in. That was a good link. That was huh? a very good lineup, yes. Uh, and second one, increase the istighfar, inshallah ta'ala. I just want to thank you both for joining me on this uh, chai sofa chat, inshallah. Uh, and everybody, jazakallah khair for coming. And we really hope, we really wish that you enjoyed the, the event today, inshallah. I'm going to pass it over to my brother, inshallah, who's going to take off from us. Inshallah, jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Wahaj Tareen and Mufti Menk. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Joinal, for that insightful interview. Chai Chad. So now...